How efficient? Can I protect myself? Ten years ago, we had an incident. He was shooting at our uh, police officers' bats. 0.1% of the incidents, but you're wearing 99.9% .9 an armor which is too heavy. We're mostly using the same materials than our competitors, but the thing is how we use it. If I have um, a, a good armor, it might be the best armor in the world. Mm. But if my pants are always going down to my knees, yeah. it, it won't help me. Yeah? So we need clothing that works with the armor, not against it. I have a theory, and that is that... Hi guys, welcome to another beer 30 at UF Pro. My name is Armin, you know me already. And today I'm here with Nico from our mother company, Mela Mario System. And uh, of course, there is a reason why, not only because you're a great guy, but there is another reason as well. Um, we want to talk today about ballistics because that is the core competency of Mela Mario System. And uh, not about the ordinary topics when people are talking about uh, ballistics, but we will focus mainly on misconceptions when it comes to ballistics. So, Nico, before joining Mailer as a sales manager, uh, you had already a life. Uh, what did you do at that time? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks for being here. Uh, that's uh, very cool, and uh, to have this interview with you, that's uh, that's really cool. And uh, of course, have a beer. Yeah, that's that's a great thing. Um, yeah, before before Mill, I, I really had a life. Um, I actually have a life, yeah, but. Uh, um, I started in the military for 12 years in the German military and I uh, was uh, 12 years in the military as an active soldier. Um, I ended my career as a master sergeant. Mm -hmm. um, I was mostly in the infantry. I started with long range reconnaissance mm -hmm. and then um, over uh, to artillery observer, uh, JTAG, some some other things uh, like um, um, close combat uh, controller, uh, like uh, a fire from helicopters. Then I changed, <laughs> I changed a lot in the military. I changed to to the airborne, uh, was there as an anti-tank officer, uh, guided weapons, um, uh, some recon reconnaissance stuff and something. And then at the end, I was in a air assault unit mm -hmm. as a pathfinder and uh, we created landing zones for the regiment and something. So- um, Great. Yeah, had a good time. Even Afghanistan 2009 uh, was a good time. Yeah, and then cool. I left the military as I mm. told you as a master sergeant and uh, go to the private sector. Yeah, and in the private sector, um, yeah, I had also a good time as a, a, a personal security guy. I had mm. uh, a, a, a lead some uh, security teams. I was in, into uh, anti piracy. Uh, okay. You has a lot of fun. tours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very interesting. So, um, and that's where I wear a lot of armor and a lot of helmets. And so we we get the uh, the circle back to the to the topic. So I had a lot of experience with all this stuff. Uh, wear different uh, armors and see a lot of uh, different uh, yeah different stuff in the, in this time. Yeah. Great. Now, some 20 years ago, I, I had my first contact with body armor. <clears throat> I was working before already in textile industry, and then I came to uh, as a consultant to a company called Second Chance. I think the company is might be still out there, a US company. And there was a guy, the founder of the company, who was really a uh, he was, he was a great guy, he was brilliant. Uh, he was actually the inventor of concealable body armor. And of course, when you're, when, when you're getting, for the first time, uh, confronted with the topic ballistics, body armor, uh, then of course, you always start talking about bulletproof vests where they give you the first slaps yeah, and say yeah. bulletproof vest. There is nothing like a bulletproof vest. So that's the first steps. But you know, the main thing, and that was really the interesting thing for me was, um, he was not just talking about bullets or guns or stuff like that. His main topic was how efficient can I protect myself? Yeah. And that is also because of his background. Uh, I'm not going into that. That's a different beer 30, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, 
what he said, of course, it's important what what rounds the body armor stops. Yeah. yeah. That's that's usually what all the people are talking about. But you know, people always forget when they are talking about body armor and the efficiency of protection. Efficiency of protection. How good, how efficient do I protect myself? Well, they always forget that there is much more than just that specific threat. There is, for example, also what's the area of the body which is covered by that. Definitely, yeah. And that is very important because what does it help you if you, if I have such a plate which stops all the bullets in the world uh, and they're shooting me left or right? Yeah, yeah that's and true, yeah. That's as useless as I don't know what. So what he said, okay, stopping power, yes, uh, but area of coverage, very important. And then I said, yeah, good, now, now I got it. And then he said, well, but what if you don't wear it? He said, yeah, fuck. Why shouldn't I wear it? Yeah, because this stuff has a nasty side, and that is, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you start to ask yourself always the question: uh, Is it dangerous today? Uh, is it? No, you cannot, because you never know if if it is the day where it is going to happen to you. So, the time of wearing, then you say, okay, time of wearing. Uh, yeah, it's uncomfortable. Okay, so then you end up with the acceptance of the body armor, the comfort of the body that's, armor, that's how acceptable yeah. it is. So it is actually three three parameters which are influencing uh, the efficiency of protection. Because I can have the best body armor, uh, 10 meters by 10 meters, lying all in the back of my car, and I'm confronted with the guy who wants to kill me then my fucking good body armor in the back of the car doesn't help me at all. It protects so your car. It protects your car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Of exactly. So this is this is this was the moment when I started to recognize there is so many misconceptions in this area. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's it starts you're totally right with that. Uh, it starts all with um, with the knowledge about body armor. Mm. Uh, to be honest, I, I was 12 years in the military and what did I know about my body armor? <laughs> If it's cold outside, it keeps me warm. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. and, and, that, and that's that's the point. Yeah? Yeah. So, and I can put my 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 fingers in to have it warm, and that's it. So, um, yeah, you, you get a body armor. Yeah? It's issued by the by the military, and it's all over the world the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you get it, and yeah, as a conscript or something, mm -hmm. what does it protect me for? You don't uh, think about it. No. Bullets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. What kind of bullets? Ah. I don't care. Yeah. You have to wear it. Okay, I wear it. And it, you, you didn't ask for that mm -hmm. because you get you get that issued and you're happy that you have something and you work with that mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I started questioning about body armor after some years in the military because in the training we don't have the body armor, but uh, then go to Afghanistan and then you were issued a body armor, which is. Great. Yeah, which is big, <laughs> Sense, heavy, yeah. and and uh, very warm, especially in Afghanistan. Uh, was this thing train like you fight. Yeah, was it there. Uh, I heard it some time ago. Yeah, but different times. Now, oh, yeah, now yeah. it's it's better in the military. Yeah. They they get their armor. They get some training blades, and now it's it's trained uh, as you fight. But in former times, it was different. Yeah, oh. so you I've you. Been there. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and um, <clears throat> you see your body armor the first time in Afghanistan. Yeah? So, and yeah, what what did we know about that? Yeah, we know um, if some uh, somebody shoots at us, it will hopefully stop the bullet. Mm. Uh, so we wear it and we're fine with that. But afterwards, um, yeah, I start questioning about that. Uh, try to get a booklet, read about that. And it's a very, very wide field mm. with many questions. Every every question you answer, uh, you have three new questions after that. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's it's not it's not like um, it's not like uh, in, in the technical branch where it's you- It's black and white. No, it's, it's not. It's yeah. in the technical branch. You have an M6, M6 crew. The M6 yeah. crew is yeah. the M6 crew all, all over the world. Mm but not in ballistics. Mm -hmm. You have the different standards. You have um, some, some abbreviations of these standards. You have some 
some things which are not which are gray zones and where some people play inside and this playing inside the gray zones can be very good for the customer mm. but can also be very bad for the customer yeah. Yeah, so and this is this is a play which all is about trust yeah. and you have you have to uh, to trust the guy which issues you the body armor yeah. and um, because if you actually don't trust it you have just useless weight that you're yeah, carrying yeah. with you. And you will and not it's carry. Easily, uh, uh, what's the weight? Five kilos, six kilos? Ah, depends on depends yeah. on the... Uh, so if I, if I have, let's say, reasonable plates that stop, well, there is the other thing when people say, well, does it stop a Kalashnikov? Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. <laughs> but uh, and and that that's the next point I want to go uh, through because you said uh, they they just say uh, stop it that bullet. No, they don't ask for the bullet. They just ask for the weapon. But uh, the AK, uh, which AK? AK forty seven, AK seventy four, uh, the mild steel core, the yeah. soft core, the uh, the hard core, the armor piercing. Yeah. It's it's very very different, and this makes yeah. the the armor <clears throat> from. If I say AK-47, yeah, I can have an 800 gram plate where I can go swimming with, mm. or two and a half kilo plate. Yeah, yeah it depends on the ammunition yeah. I want to, yeah. uh, and um, and that's the uh, one of the next points. I can up armor the people. Uh, yes. I, if I don't know the answer for that, I say, uh, take the two and a half and you're safe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the two and a half. Yeah. Maybe I don't need it, and I, I start to, to because the two and a half you have a front and you have a back, yeah, yeah. and you have to carry it the whole day. So yeah, you have and, to and, and carry the, extra six kilos, five six kilos. With the rest of the vest, you have to carry yeah. these six kilos ten hours. Yeah, and and Maybe this is not the heavy. Degrees. Yeah, and, and this is not the heavy uh, thing you have to carry yeah. at the moment. Uh, ten years ago, the most heavy thing on your vest was the plates. Yeah, but mm. right now you have very lightweight plates, very lightweight ballistic, but you have. Uh, a lot of ammunition, your radios, uh, something to drink, something to eat. You have some some more stuff, uh, binoculars or something. So um, yeah, it's it's getting more and more and more. It's it's not the lightweight infantryman. Uh, the lightweight infantryman has up to sixty kilos to carry with him. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and that's yeah. the lightweight. So um, yeah, and and you you will reach a certain point where the people not wearing the armor anymore because they will start to to put things out soft ballistic hard ballistic they don't care because it all it's all too heavy and they don't accept it anymore mm. so i think it's sometimes it's better to um, have a little less protection yes but Absolutely. it's it's worn all the day uh, Absolutely. instead of having a lot of protection uh, but it's never worn which uh, so means which means of course uh, do I want to protect myself against uh, this certain exotic bullet which uh, was around 10 years ago, but now nobody has it anymore? Yeah. Uh, uh, so for, this is... For that, for that I have yeah. something. Uh, yeah. There were some Special Forces guys on the booth and uh, they come to me and say, ah, here we need, we need something to uh, protect for uh, um, 308, um, uh, API ammunition, mm -hmm. tungsten carbide, and yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, what? Yeah. yeah, ten years ago we had an incident where one guy was in a hut on the on a mountain, and he was shooting at our uh, police officers with that. And so we needed for that. Okay, that's zero point one percent of the of the incidents. Yeah, but you're wearing ninety nine point nine percent an armor which is too heavy. Yeah, yeah? it makes no sense at all. Yeah. yeah? So, uh, uh, and that, that's, a big, that's a big problem. So you need an armor which is, is good for 99% uh, yes. of the time. And the 1%, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's not about yeah. making an Iron Man and yeah. everyone is protected and uh, walks over the battlefield and is, is not hurt. Mm. That's not the point with the ballistics. So when we were talking before, you said already the crucial thing here is threat assessment. Yes. Definitely. Uh, yeah. it's, um, you cannot leave that to somebody who has no idea, no, no. no clue. Yeah. You have to have an expert who really does a threat assessment yeah. of the scenario in which you are moving every day. And the threat scenario is not based on standards. Uh, uh, yes, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, and, and that's the point. It's, yeah. it's um, um, often talked to people and said, uh, what is your threat? 
what is your day-to-day -day threat uh, which you face in, in your missions? And they say something like VPN 9 or NHJ4. Yeah, this is a standard and the level of a standard, but not a threat mm. because it's, it <clears throat> doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. NHA4 is not a threat. It's an it's in standard with an ammunition behind that, but that's not a common threat. Mm -hmm. Your threat is uh, like a police officer says, okay, I'm I'm close to Eastern Europe, uh, nine mil. Okay, it's a basic Makarov Tokarev, yes. maybe, and uh, in some kinds uh, in the Amok situation, AK47 Mild Steel Core. Mm -hmm. That's that's my threat, but. It's not only the ammunition. It's also how long do I uh, do I stay uh, in the, in the field? Yeah, mm -hmm. even even as a police officer. Yeah, we we saw it uh, we saw it in uh, in Texas some years ago. At the beginning, all the guys came in with their truck, the helmets, the vests, and they look really cool. And they have an active shooter scenario. They go up uh, the the stairs ramming the door, pushing in, nobody there, coming out, looking at the plan, okay, two streets two streets away, the same. They did this for over six hours for um, by uh, 35 degrees outside. And in the end, they had all an Oakley, mm. uh, their gun, yeah. and two rifle mags in their pants, yeah. and that's it. Because you can't stay in the field over uh, over an amount of time with uh, too heavy equipment. Absolutely, and that's and that's the point. And there were, <clears throat> and that is a threat. Yeah, mm. how f how uh, um, what is the ammunition? Uh, what uh, what is my opponent? Yeah, um, do I have an opponent which is um, military trained or something? Mm -hmm. uh, we have some some uh, customers. Uh, they talked about they have some. Yeah, military trained uh, opponents, which have guns with armor penetration. Mm -hmm. yeah? So uh, they have some some big sporting guns mm -hmm. with self-made ammo, and that's a threat for them, a day-to-day yes. -day threat. And so they need a complete other armor than the normal police officer in, uh, on the street mm -hmm. in, in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. yeah? And of course, <clears throat> I think people have to understand that body armor doesn't give you a guarantee to survive everything. No. It is like, for me, it is always, and when we were in discussions like that, it was always as I said to people, look, this is like a safety belt in your car. Yeah. You know, uh, you have now generally two systems of safety belts. You have the one which is in an ordinary car, and then you have the safety belt systems which are in a race car. Now, um, with both of the safety belts, uh, you cannot hit a wall at 200 kilometers per hour. You shouldn't. <laughs> you, you definitely could try it. Yeah. But once, yeah. Uh, but then the difference between the two of them is also a race car driver is exposed to a very high risk. So he wants to have a more sophisticated safety belt system. Yeah. And an ordinary driver, he is exposed to a risk, but it's a lower risk. So he would use the normal three-point safety belt um, because it gives him also a good chance, you know, to survive an accident. Not every accident. It's not a guarantee yeah, to survive, sure. um, but it might increase your your chance. Your chance. And yeah. and that's exactly. Um, it's all about chances. Yes. Yeah. And it's it's not. There is no one hundred percent guarantee or, or chance. That that you get un unharmed in a, in a firefight or something. Mm. That's it's it's just not true. But yeah. um, if my chance is was twenty percent, yeah. uh, without an armor, it's maybe 70, 80 percent with an armor. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> I can really increase that, and mm. um, the chance even if I if I get hit. I get hit in some areas, and then we are mm. back to the point area of coverage. Mm. Yeah? Um, I have to to cover the vital organs where, when I get hit, I, I immediately die. Mm. Yeah? So, but if I get hit in the shoulder or on the leg, and it's it's not uh, the femoralis arteria or something, mm. yeah? Yeah. I can survive that. Yeah. Yeah? But mm. I need a treatment, of sure. course. But it it makes sure that. Uh, I have a treatment yes, yeah. Yeah. after a fire. Survive fight. until yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah. Survive until I'm on the doctor's yeah. table and then the doctor works his magic. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes it's, it's just 
uh, the armor is just um, for keeping things together uh, till I get uh, on the surgery table. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's a hard truth. Uh, it's it's not. I'm I'm Iron Man. I walk through the fire and, and nothing happens. That's not true. Yeah. And I would I would say that also here there is always that component of active and passive protection. Yes. Uh, safety, uh, where you say, okay, well, I could add. I could add ballistic stopping power. I could add it, but I'm getting slower and slower. Yeah. And because like you described in the Texas situation, I might lose focus because I'm dehydrating, I'm yeah. losing strength, I'm I'm losing uh, situational awareness, I'm 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 getting slow. So the risk, I mean, on one side I I increase the protection level, on the other side I reduce uh, my my potential or I increase also the risk that I'm um, getting hit. I'm changing the focus. Yeah. I'm, I'm not focused anymore on my mission. I'm and focused on everything. Yes. Everything in my body hurts. Yeah. And we know it, we're in, this, in a certain hole where everything hurts. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm just focused on, on me because yeah. the, the, the sweat is running down the back and it's, it's heavy, my shoulders, my knees. Mm. Now I'm just focused on my problems and not on the mission. Yeah. And that's a problem. Yeah. So, and I have to stay focused on the mission. And for that, I need an armor which, um, which fits to my needs. And that's yes. and that's yeah. that's that's yeah. a point. It's yeah. not, as as we told, yeah, it's not the the standard or the some mm. some fancy stuff which mm. saves my life. It's the armor. It's the armor which yeah. saves my life. And we have to talk about more about armor and the needs on in my day-to-day -day business, except on uh, instead of uh, fancy uh, stuff. The yeah. fancy stuff, I like the fancy stuff. Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm a gear sure. yeah, sure. so I like the fancy yeah. stuff and it makes yeah. things better, sure. Yeah. But you can also have a blade in the front and the back in, the, in, a, plastic, in a plastic bag with some tape and yeah. it will also protect your life. Yeah. But it, you will not wear it for over one hour, yeah. So, sure. so uh, the fancy stuff makes life better. Yeah. Uh, makes you more efficient, mm. faster, more focused. But at the end, the fancy stuff doesn't mm. save your life. And what, what I also found very interesting in that area, we as manufacturers of clothing, who are actually the, the next component, so the component which is next to the body armor, uh, either above it or below it, <clears throat> we are part of the interface uh, between yeah. between body armor and the human. So that interface, that I, I see that as one of the biggest challenges, and which is also the the, the beauty and the luxury that we are having, being in the same group of companies. Definitely. That, that uh, we together we can optimize that interface, yeah. which will uh, contribute a lot to the variability and then to the acceptance, yeah. and uh, maybe. Uh, also by reducing the physical stress, uh, increasing focus, uh, increasing awareness. Uh, yeah. And I think that is that is one of the tasks that we are having in the future together, that we are really working on how do we optimize that. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, as I said, with the focus, if I have, um, have a, a good armor, it might be the best armor in the world. Mm. But if my pants are always going down to my knees, yeah. it, it won't help me. Yeah. Yes. So we need we need um, clothing that works with the armor, not against it. Yes. And um, something like sweat management, and um, that the belt is on <laughs> on the right point, right. and everything. Right. So uh, the the trousers, the the pouches, that's that's all playing together. Yes. Uh, it's it's not yeah. not like. 20 years before where you are here is a vest yeah. it's warm it's heavy yeah. and that's it yeah. uh, what you wear underneath don't care no it's it's a system it's a it's a system yeah and and that system approach is absolutely uh, important i ha i had something going to my mind um but now i forgot it yeah it's standards standards you mentioned it uh well i um, i remember 20 years ago when um when we were in europe looking at threats it was clear it was nine millimeter. And then there was that exotic threat coming from the east, which was the Tokarev. Yeah. Uh, 762, that was that was becoming more and more of, of an issue. But that was already the issue where you said, okay, well, 
that could be additional extra testing that you're doing. But the main testing was nine millimeter and the main threat was not nine millimeter. But still, there were countries that were purchasing according to NIJ 3A. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is, for, which, which was for me always unlogic because NIJ 3A, yes, it also has nine millimeter, but the main focus is on these uh, bullets with a heavy punch. Yeah, and, 44 Magnum. Yeah, and, and reducing back face there. Yeah. Uh, so, so body armor in the US is made for the US threat. Which yes. Is these definitely punches. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, so again, there was that misconception. Yeah, if it's good for America, it's also good for Europe. It's not. No. No, because it, it's Europe not. is a different scenario. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's about the threat uh, assessment. Yeah. yeah, we have to make a, a clean threat assessment and have to see which bullets are used as yeah. in my area and what is my threat. Yeah. To to be honest, to be shot by a 44 Magnum in in Germany or Slovenia, yeah, most mostly not. Uh, yeah. Or uh, if you go to NHA4, NHA4, it's a 3006. Uh, 30 machine gun uh, uh, AP ammunition. Mm. It was last year, uh, last used in the Korean War. <laughs> so if you're not living in Texas and kicking the door of a Korean War veteran, nobody <laughs> will shoot with this ammunition at you. Huh? Yeah. It, it makes no sense. Yeah. Huh? So, um, but you have to know why they put the uh, 306 M2 AP ammunition in it mm. because they want to simulate the um, the Dragunov, mm -hmm. and that and that was the point. Mm. Huh? And even they have to. Um, to unload and uh, reload uh, the the bullet because um, the power of the M2 is the not speed. the same. It's not the same like uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like the Dragunov. So mm. nobody will ever shoot with this ammunition at you. Uh, yeah. So it makes no sense. But it's a derivative for the Dragunov. Yeah. But you have to know that, uh, and and that's that's a point. Um, there's so much to know about ballistics. It's getting more and more each day. There's new ammunition every day, no new threats. There are a lot of uh, new uh, weapons coming uh, to the market. You know, mm. now with the, uh, with the war in Ukraine, a lot of weapons will come over, over uh, after a certain uh, sure. certain time. Absolutely. AK, AK-74, Black, Black Market. market will be booming. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and and that, that will be a threat for the future. So. And you have to see that in your threat assessment. Yeah. Ah. The other thing that I came across at that time was that the body armor industry is a cheater's industry. There is so much cheating in that industry that it you rarely found companies like, like Mailer who were really ethical. There were also a couple of US companies that were really ethical. But there were so many cheaters in that, you know, having having armors uh, certified and then for the delivery, taking out layers of soft armor uh, for the deliveries because there was no retesting. There was no lot release testing. Uh, there was there was these uh, people who had, you know, they, they had a huge surface. So the yeah. West looked great. You know, yeah. there were huge surfaces. You say, wow, that's an area of coverage. But the edges were all full. Yeah, yeah. So the real yeah, ballistic no. panel, yeah. that was pretty small. But you know, if you hold it we, in your hand, if you see it on a, on a mannequin, it looked great. We're doing ballistics for over 40 years, right? Yeah. yeah so uh, I think uh, we have a certain idea of uh, yeah. what, how, what's possible and, and, yeah. and what not. Uh, and uh, if we lose a tender, um, because someone is 25% uh, lighter than, than we are. Yeah, something is. Mm. Okay, something is weird in here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and that, that's a problem. Um, because the, the, and then back to the threat assessment. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, after the threat assessment, I have to see what do I really need? Uh, I need a, a plate or a soft ballistic, which is uh, the full coverage and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I have I have to write in the tender documents um, a lot of sentence sentences uh, which uh, makes make sure that I definitely get what I want mm -hmm. because the tender documents. The good thing is you get what you write in it. The yeah. bad thing is you get you get what you write in it. Absolutely. Uh, and Absolutely. Uh, if if you have um, a small failures in it. Um, 
it will come back all to you because there are uh, some gray zones where where you can cheat and something. Uh, you know, yeah. I ha I have in in this area I have a different opinion. And my opinion is that it shouldn't be about tender documentation. The, I think the tender procedure should include a product evaluation. Yes. And that product evaluation should actually have the main priority and the main weight in the decision making. The product evaluation, which is really on the table, the product which I have on the table. So if I would be an organization, I would invite people to say, okay, deliver me what you have and yeah. I'm going to test it. Uh, give me also your specification of the product. And because if I'm choosing you after my thorough evaluation, then I want exactly that product which I evaluated. And that is the way how I would set up tenders. And this is getting more and more real because yeah. um, a lot of um, authorities make uh, um, some um, um, assessment, some some testing. They make market research, mm -hmm. and they they get all the stuff. They test it, and um, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's get, it's getting better. It's yeah. uh, because, because because that's that's the only fair way. Also, yeah, yeah, and Beca because I mean, if I'm writing now a tender specification because I like your product. Then with that tender specification, I give already the, the uh, instruction to my competitor or to your competitor how to manufacture that body armor. That's not fair. That's not fair yeah. business. You want to have the best product in the market, but you also don't want to always screw your uh, supplier of the best product in the market by inviting the, the copiers into the business. That's not fair business. Yeah, but. Uh, in the in the uh, in the technical way, it's it's like um, we we mostly using the same materials than our competitors. But the thing is about how we use it. I mean, that's, how we how we make all this stuff. And that's and, and that's key. Yeah. And, you know, there is so much differences in the details which make a huge difference than in performance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It makes a huge, very very huge difference. And uh, the good thing is, um, I'm a big friend of. Um, uh, testing with the customers mm. uh, to go to the customer, shoot at it, look at it, what happens, and everything, um, because the guys should see what they will get at the end. Yeah, so I want to like to be with them, shoot at the things. Uh, okay, it's mm. fun too. Yeah, but yeah. you see what happens: the delaminating, how deep is it inside, how how big is the back face deformation, and something. So. And not only that, um, I'm also a big, big friend of um, if you bought some, some plates or soft ballistics, yeah, come over, come to the, to the company and say, okay, this is, this is my stuff, yeah, okay, I want to test this. Mm. Yeah, then we take this, go to the in-house in shooting area. Put it on and, the clay. Yeah, put it on the clay, shoot, it. shoot at it, and that's the honest way you, you can you can do that yeah? because otherwise you have just some testing documents or something and you you can always cheat on that yeah. that's that's very easy yeah but it, you can't cheat if you have 1000 ballistics mm -hmm. there and the guy come over and say okay i want to have uh, this one you put it out you shoot at it there's no way of cheating yeah? Yeah. so i would like to come back to that uh, threat assessment thing because I, I I don't know what you were saying about that but I have a theory and that is that threat assessment is critical because you admit that you leave a certain percentage out of your evaluation or not of the evaluation but you purposely say well I don't want to include that protection in in my protection concept. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing that, then if actually something happens and the probability is very low, but you know the devil is a yeah, sure, is, sure. Is, a, is a weasel, and it happens, and then there comes this journalist and he investigates and he said, well, wasn't there the discussion during the development of that project where you were talking about, and you, Mr. Smith, you said that you are not taking that into the into your protection concept. I don't think it's a problem. 
I, I think the problem is mentality that people yes. are not willing to take the risk to take a critical decision. Yes. Yeah, yes, of course, it's hard because, you know, you take this ammunition out and the next day yeah, uh, someone it happens, is... It, and the journalists will write exit. about you yeah. and your head will be on the block. Even though you did yeah, the but, right thing. You did the right thing. But to be honest, you can, you can, you can see all the documents and you can, you can verify how often somebody is shot with with a caliber 50 yeah, yeah? so yeah. yeah you know yeah caliber 50 never plays a role uh, here because yeah. nobody shoots with it but mm -hmm. yeah someday someone is, is sh uh, shot with the caliber 50 and the next day someone will scream and say oh we need some protection about caliber 50. oh absolutely yeah, <laughs> sure makes <laughs> makes no sense at all but yeah you have to be realistic and you have to you have to see and that's about the chances mm. you have to protect your guys as best as you can. Mm. But for 99% of the day-to-day -day business and not for the 1% once in a yeah. lifetime. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's the point. Yeah. Because it makes no sense. And they, they will hate you for that, that you have mm. uh, looked at the 1%, you have yeah. a too heavy armor and nobody is wearing it. Yeah. And then... The big question is, yeah, yeah. Uh, the police officer had an armor, but he didn't wear it and was shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but why? Huh? Yeah, exactly, yeah. because of this 1%. Yes. I remember a tender in Italy 20 years ago. They were actually specifying a bullet that was not on the market anymore since five years. We didn't even have, at that time, the possibility to buy that round for testing the armor that we were developing because it wasn't on the market anymore. Yeah. The only ones who were having that bullet was the test lab <laughs> that was the only ones who were having that yeah. so I, I think that's that's the point where we should end a discussion which we probably could lead uh, for the next five hours uh, for our, we, we, we could we could we, empty two cases of beer and we still wouldn't go yeah come to an that's end. true that's true ballistic it's, it's such a broad yeah. field and it's so I guess the clever threat assessment that is for me that is the yeah. key thing and you know taking the risk to say well i consciously take that threat out of my safety concept out of my protection concept because i want to have i want to have that body armor on the on the officer on the soldier uh, all the time and especially the the moment when the bullet hits his body i want that area protected and i want him to wear it yeah. and hopefully his body armor is going to stop that bullet at that time ask the guys on yeah. the street yeah they they know their threats uh, yeah. ask a lot of people uh, mm. you, you know you you ask 10 10 uh, yeah, people yeah. and you 20 will answers 20 answers but yeah. collect them do that yeah do a really good uh, assessment and afterwards, we can talk about uh, standards. But exactly. Afterwards. afterwards. Not yeah. not initially start with the standard. Standard follows threat assessment. Yes. That's yeah. our slogan for the day. Yeah, Cheers exactly. Nico. Yes. Cheers. So, guys, if you liked our discussion, I mean, we liked it a lot. If you liked our discussion and uh, would like to join us for another hot topic, then please tune in the next time. If you have any questions, just leave us your comments below and we are looking forward to seeing you the next time at Beer 30. Cheers. Cheers.